at the end of birth, usually, I'm a screamer. And so I, I really use my voice during the whole birth process, a lot of toning, a lot of moaning. Um, this time I was way more um, aware of my breath um, and of the strength of my voice. The other times I just wasn't um, diving into that practice, but this time I was. So I was aware of that control that I could have um, with my breath. And so towards the end, you know, it's, you know, you're just like, how much longer, guys? Anybody, can anybody help me or tell me when this is gonna be over? And so it was at that point, it was just like in this like open squat with like my leg open and kind of just like up. And so there was room for the baby to plop out. And um, I started screaming, just like, ah! And what it was doing was taking me out of my body and into my head again. And so Aubrey always got the right thing to say. Um, she said, stop screaming. Oh, Why don't you just stop God. screaming and just be quiet? Something mm. around there. I don't know if that was the exact words, but it had that that feeling. Just like, wow. let's try something else. Cause she also knows that that's what I usually do at the end. She said, the baby's mm -hmm. coming at any second, Jordan, <laughs> relax. You know, and yes. you know, at this point I'm like in primal. You know, I'm covered in oh my gosh. sweat and nervousness and excitement, fear, all of it, you know, that you experience at the end. And yeah. she says this to me, to be quiet. And I'm just like, let's try, you know, why not? And so I remember just taking that breath and I put my hand down, down towards my yoni and I just breathed. That was my friend Jordan who recently gave birth to her fourth baby in the comfort of her own home while living in Tanzania with her family. We came together today for her to share her story of her most recent birth and also to revel in the evolution she's had from her other births as well. Her birth stories are both hilarious and beautiful, chaotic yet calming, and also empowering. We found many similarities in our own lives, not just from the beautiful mess of motherhood and homeschooling and raising a big family, but also from the insights we've gained over the course of our different births. We share what has helped us have the most empowering birth experiences, what hasn't helped, and everything in between. You can find Jordan on Instagram at phoenix.wild, which I'll link in the show notes and description box for you guys so you can keep up with her life journey, with her family travels, homeschooling, and motherhood. She's coming out with a homeschooling course actually soon, so stay tuned for that. And she also just launched an online marketplace to be able to find natural mother and baby products all in one beautiful place, which I'll link for you as well below. All right, buckle up for some birth stories. I laughed a lot in this episode. I probably loved it so much because I find so much joy talking about birth, so I hope you enjoy it too. Let's get into it. All right, Jordan, how are you? It is so good to talk to you and finally speak face to face. I agree. I'm so well, so excited. Ah, I'm just so excited. So excited to talk to you. Totally. We have been online friends for a while. Yes. And so it's nice to just connect and we have so much in common. I feel like especially being in the same phase of life of motherhood, you just had your fourth baby and I feel like there's so much connection there to laugh yes. about with the oh chaos of motherhood and homeschooling as well. So yeah. And you're in yes, Taz, uh, Tanzania. Tanzania. <laughs> yes. Yes. What brought you to Tanzania? A call. Honestly, we were just in this travel flow and we're content where we were. We were traveling in Mexico and yeah, just content. And we just felt a call that we needed to come and see what it was like here. We intended to move, relocate maybe, um, but really just to come and experience Africa because this is like a big dream of ours just to come and set foot on this piece of earth. And so, yeah, we heed the call, flew out here December 21st, 2020. Auspicious time to be even doing this anyways, you know? And yeah, it's been magical. And yeah, what has it been like living there? And where did you come from? Like, where were you guys born and raised? Cause that is so fascinating to me. Okay, so I was born in Tallahassee, Antoine was born in Pittsburgh, 
and we both met in Atlanta. And we had our first child there, Nakomi, and then we were in a concrete jungle. We were like, hold on, this is not the life for us. We packed up and moved to Kauai, Hawaii, and uh, had two daughters there. Honestly, would still be there if it wasn't so different. I'm sure you can attest to how different Maui has become since everything. Um, and yeah, we just felt like we needed to just move on. Kauai, Hawaii in general just feels like home, or one of our homes, so we know we'll return one day. Um, but yeah, we were in Mexico, then we were traveling a little bit in Panama, and then we got here. And That yeah. is so cool. Man. Just saying all of that, it's like just such this big breath of adventure and memories. Totally. Yeah. And, wh- and yeah, like what is it like in Tanzania? What's life like there? Life is very slow, like pole pole, that's what they say here, slow, slow. It's very meditative, everyone has their work, everyone does their thing. Um, the people here are very chill, happy, very comfortable, I would say that, very comfortable. Um, family unit is very strong, um, lots of children, a lot of independence as well, seeing that. It's just a lot of differences to observe living in a country that's completely different than what you grew up in. Um, and so, yeah, seeing a lot of reflections, a lot of lessons, a lot of difficult things to see, you know, um, a lot of things that we assumed about Africa in general that have been debunked and new things that we're discovering that would be great to learn from continuously and share in platforms like this um things that you know you may not know about africa that we would have never known until we got here so totally so what's something that you think needs to be shared that like a lot of people don't know um i think that um there's this need on both ends to come somehow like this the grass is greener on the other side so for black Americans in America, it feels like we're missing something from being in Africa. And for Africans here, they feel like, you know, in a way that they're missing out or that it's just like this, we, we think we're world of di- differences from each other, you know, that we're so different. Um, and coming together face to face with, you know, reflections of yourself, it's like, wow, we're really, we're not so different. but it does make it difficult because not everybody has these realizations. You know, people who think that Mm -hmm. we're different, they think that we're different, they treat us differently um, and assume that we're gonna be a certain way when we come. And I'm sure the same happens when they come to America. You know, we assume certain things about Africans. um, And this is not even just for black Americans, just Americans in general, people in general, how we perceive those who live in Africa versus the Western world. But, there's a lot of them wanting to be like what they think they're supposed to be, which is us. You know, this Western lifestyle, this, you know, all the stigmas that comes with it, right? The consumerism, the being on the phones, like, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how much that's revered. Um, even with religion, you know, it's really a lot of things are outside of themselves. I definitely came here and thought I was going to have a way more indigenous experience really tapped to into like ancestral lifestyle but there's actually a lot of people here who are just trying to be western and you know importing a lot of things um and of course i'm having my own experience here in tanzania this is the only country that i've visited so uh, my experience is true for what i've had here in this country i can't say for anywhere else um Totally, because it's going to be so different wherever you go. Do you plan to go to other countries and other areas? I think so one day. Um, Yeah, we're just like, again, listening to the call. We're getting the call to go return back to Mexico and um, hopefully actually ground in because we wanted to do that here, but it just wasn't in alignment. And so going to... Mexico doesn't mean that we'll never come back here or that right you know um, because I still want to visit Ethiopia and Egypt I've been like to the airport 
at Ethiopia and it was amazing. And so I definitely want to go there. Um, Kenya, Ghana, I mean, there's, there's so much to see. And so we'll definitely be back for sure. That's amazing. And the type of life experience that you're giving your kids while homeschooling is so special. I think the, the traveler and adventurous mindset is really beautiful, especially while you're homeschooling. They get to learn so much with all the different cultures and life experiences through different ways of life. Agreed. I'm so happy for them. Like, they're, they called in the right experience for them. As I know, not, not everybody gets to have this experience, and they're so, it, it's such a special time for them, especially just them being siblings and being able to do this together. You know, it's not like I just have one child. <laughs> There's four of them now. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just, they get to I just can do relate. this all together. Yeah, oh, four. Outnumbered is a, a, a trivial thing to say at this point. This is just so many children. <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> It is safe to say that is true. Andrew and I will off, like very often look at each other from across the room and we're just like, <laughs> what? what is happening? <laughs> uh, or at night when they're all sleeping, just like, what exploded out of me? There's so many. <laughs> Getting names mixed up. Who are you? You. Which one are you? Just come here. <laughs> Finally getting like a deep breath, like a, like a, just a, a, a heave of like sighing out, like, oh, okay, oh. the day's over. <laughs> but it's like this beautiful mess and chaos. And I love with the homeschooling life that they get to all do it together okay. and grow from each other. And it's just so beautiful. It's like chaotic and hilarious and just incredibly loving all at the same time. I agree. I agree. <laughs> So how has the homeschooling been like with all your travels and now just having your fourth baby? Congratulations, by the way. I'm so happy for you. And we're definitely going to get into that. I can't like that's going to be the bulk of what we talk about. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. How has the homeschooling been where you're living? Yeah, so I'm I'm actually grateful that they're of the age, like preschool age, where it doesn't really alert people if they're not in school. With that being said, homeschooling is illegal here. I don't even know what that means. Things like that, I don't know. I just feel like they don't apply to me. I'm like, okay, I'm still going to do it anyways. You know, I'm like, I'll figure it out. Like, <laughs> thanks for telling me. But, you know, uh, so people view it, they're just like in shock and awe. You know, at this point, they're just like, oh, mm-hmm. at home? Why? You know, there's schools. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like on that end also for like birthing even home birth they're the same way like why are you gonna do it at home there's hospitals you know it's not even really this judgment thing it's just like for what reason would you do that when things are set up and so um they actually went to school for one full week um because i had actually started the homeschool flow and i was feeling overwhelmed i was like I felt like I was not managing it properly and that someone else could do it better. Honestly, I had that experience. Um, And it was really my first try, which is like, you know, um, just a part of the learning lesson, I guess. And so we asked them, and you know, they also equally agreed, right? Because we're just not getting along homeschooling, trying to, you know, whatever what wasn't working wasn't working. And I think we needed to have the experience at school to remind us of why we wanted to do it at school, at home. Um, And so they did school, they had to wake up early, it was like an hour away drive. And I just started feeling like, honestly, the feelings of like jealousy, like, oh, so you guys just get to go to school and do crafts with some other lady, like, I can do this with you. You know, I just felt like I was missing out on all of these amazing things that I just even naturally love to do myself, you know? And so it was just like, you know, kind of in that way. And, um, kind of the 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 way that they do schooling here is also it's not like ancestral it's very like it's like british curriculum it's like it's weird because it's like you know i assume that maybe some african lifestyle would be taught but it wasn't and, and with um them being there just a week we picked that up and they by the by the end of the week were just like not into it and so we just found a way to get out of the school. I mean, we had rolled them, got them uniforms. It was this whole thing. And uh, we're like, no, this is why we want them to be home. 
and we want to all be together. And, you know, to this day, just asking them or people ask, they're, you know, we want to be home with mom. Like, no, I don't want to go to school, you know. And so for however long that that continues, I'm in support of it. And, um, yeah, but I'm definitely grateful that they're preschool age and not like middle schoolers or anything. So, Right. Yeah, and part of the reason why you might have even moved where you are now is because you're looking for kind of like the true original cultural experience and you're like wait I could just send my kids for the westernized type of schooling experience if I was back home so why am I doing that here right yeah Yeah. and Um, I think now that you've added a fourth to your tribe to your group like it just adds a whole nother level of just intensity with homeschooling and do you get much help from your partner Antoine like what is the flow like with your family yeah so here it's it's all about the village right that's that that's you know some things that are embedded that I don't think will ever wash away just that strong family unit um, and so we have what's called a dada in our home it literally translates to sister so I have a sister in the home who just I wouldn't even call her a nanny just an extension of the family someone who supports the mother and the flow that you know I do throughout the house so once um, I had my fourth um, I had my my dada here supporting the whole family flow so supporting even Antoine so that Antoine can support me because you know there's certain things that he can't do but that a woman can there's certain ways that she you know brings my postpartum tea and my meals that you know not that Antoine can't but he gets to do other things um, like support me getting a shower and doing all the other posts. There's so much to do <laughs> postpartum, especially with three so toddlers much. running around, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And they're, you know, acclimating to the new energies as well. Um, and so, yeah, I'm grateful to have been here for postpartum because we definitely um, had help in some ways for my other postpartum, but it still was like, it was just different, you know, to have a babysitter or a nanny in the Western world is very expensive. Number one, it's not affordable. It's like a, you've got to take a second job just to support the support in your home, you know. And um, although we do have a big family, you know, where they're all like in Atlanta and in the South. And so Antoine is one of 10. Like they, I technically should never have to, I know, yeah, I technically should should never have to worry about you know extension of ourselves village wise you know but living in Hawaii is just it's far you know Um, not to say nobody could come we uh, will just say that for the family who's watching Um, but it is far and yeah so we just flowed with what we had during those postpartum but here I would say this is the longest I've been able to like rest in bed um, due to the extra village support so that is grateful. beautiful because a lot of times you might assume that the more kids you have the harder it is to rest and the less likely you're going to be able to rest but I've also found that the more children I have the more value I've placed upon resting and being willing to Agreed. reach out for support and yep. welcome support yep. so that I can heal the quickest and just like rejuvenate myself while I bond with the baby so that's so great I'm so happy that you've been able to get that me too very grateful all right so I would just love to start talking about your birth I would love to hear your birth story what your other births were like and compared to this one have you found any kind of extra transformative or just revelations through this birth and yeah let's just talk about it I could talk about births for ages honestly it's just probably out of all the topics that I'm excited about this one is like at the top like I could just go on and on and on and listen to stories and talk about them and there's just so much to say so yeah let's get into it tell me about your birth oh man this is the tale a tale that I won't soon forget I'll just say that it's definitely <laughs> danced its way into a story that I could have never dreamed of, <laughs> honestly. And that's how birth is, right? The unexpected truly happens outside of anything we could have planned or have expected. Um, and I feel like all of my births were definitely that way, in a big way. We had this vision, it didn't go the way we envisioned it, and it turned out amazing nevertheless the baby came right that's the goal for the baby to come out so 
<laughs> babies came out and were healthy and amazing. Um, and I think just going into it, the number one thing that was the difference about this fourth birth is that I didn't anticipate any kind of story. I didn't dream up my perfect birth. I just listened and I just flowed into what messages I was getting from the baby, from the pregnancies. Um, and early on, um, that was a lot of the lessons that I learned with that pregnancy, just silence, um, gathering myself within and finding the resilience that it takes to birth, which is just there lying dormant until birth happens, honestly. You know, no matter how much you prepare for birth, you know, you know, it's, it's so much deeper and beyond um, what we're set up to do and prepare. Um, and so I just, you know, the fourth, you know, at this point, it's like, listen, I, I, I've done this. I've done this. You know, I don't have anything to fear. Fear is not... It doesn't have anything to do with birth, you know, pain also, like whatever, you know, that's not what I'm focusing on, trying to escape it or trying to manage it, you know, because it's not pain, it is intensity. It's a drive to the end. So of course there's sensations that are strong, but it's, it really is. And it's not about like finding this, this solitude and meditation or whatever. But it's just like working hard and having the courage to do hard work and to um, get what's being promised to you this whole nine months, which is a baby. That's what's supposed to happen. So running from it or fearing it or trying to like cope is just gonna take you out of it. It's too much in your mind. And so I had that going into this fourth, this fourth birth. Um, and towards the end, uh, number one, I, I this was like more of like a free birth experience for me um, in terms of me looking outside of myself, right? For like checkups or like um, going to a hospital or um, doing all these kind of checks and balances, which I definitely like, I had a pregnancy test. I did the early ultrasound. Um, but after that, I just like, I don't like, I don't see the point of going to um, a midwife to tell me things that I already know. I just wanted to listen. I just really just wanted to be left alone. And I feel like I said that a lot during my pregnancy, like leave me alone, just leave me alone. <laughs> it was like my mantra a lot, like nobody touched me, just let me, <laughs> like it was just, you know, and then as you get towards the end, it's like, you know, just please, nobody make eye contact with me. Just like, I just, any day I'm gonna give birth. <laughs> I actually was having this two months time where I thought I was gonna give birth. Any day, I just woke up and I thought I was gonna give birth that day. So for two months, I'm in this, this, this phase of craziness, honestly. And um, once it actually was getting closer, maybe like in January, um, I kind of started having this feeling that I was going to give birth alone. And um, I feel like I probably was projecting that onto Antoine a lot, just like because he was, he was very busy at this time with just work and us just just doing a lot of stuff. He was just in his flow. And like, because I thought I was gonna give birth every day, him going to the grocery store was just it, an immediate concern for me. Like, when are you gonna be back? Don't be gone long. I don't wanna have this baby by myself. <laughs> but at a certain point, I was like the boy who cried wolf at the end of the day, because for two months, you know? And so um, he happened to need to go to Zanzibar um, this island that's maybe like an hour flight away, not technically like far away, um, but at this point of the game, I was going to be giving birth the next maybe three days from when he left. Um, but obviously I didn't know that. And for the last time, I just decided that I wasn't gonna pester him. I wasn't gonna say, you better be back. You better not be gone long because I'm gonna have this baby. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna say that because this baby's clearly coming whenever he or she wants. And so, whatever. And so I released him to go and um, he's there playing music and doing his thing. 
and you know I was at home with the dada with the kids and I just start this manic cleaning you know but again like I felt like I was doing that a lot anyways I was just shedding a lot I was just doing a lot of that already and so we went to the beach we were doing homeschooling um, the day before I gave birth I was in the ocean the tide was so low like crawling low and so I'm just crawling in the ocean the ocean was super hot also because the tide was so low I don't know it was very it was a very interesting time in the sea I've, I've sw swam in many oceans and I've never experienced the ocean like that very flat very calm and hot I felt like it was a hot tub and that's when my sensations I would say began um, and they felt ecstatic honestly they felt amazing because I was excited and welcoming of it I wasn't running from it or looking for someone to be available to help me give birth I just wasn't thinking about that because I hadn't prepared myself to do that for nine months and so I was just enjoying it and having fun eating a lot um, and I just got back and I was just so relaxed and um, was on the phone with Antoine he was actually supposed to come back that day but ended up just being like you know the flights are just like super late I'll just be back in the morning and so okay cool fine whatever I'm releasing everything and so um, this baby also was the heaviest the heaviest pregnancy that I experienced as well and so um, I went to bed super early just laying about just just so pregnant and I went to bed that night and was just starting to have different sensations went to the bathroom wiped had that mucus plug it's like all right it's time it's game time it's time <laughs> you know and I don't think initially the fact that Antoine wasn't there immediately crossed my mind. I think I just I just missed him in that moment. Missed having that experience with him. Like for him to like see like, okay, I'm not joking. Like you can smell and feel and see and all that like with me. And so um, the first part of the birth, I did have to go through a release of that again. Um, a few weeks prior, um, our daughter, our, uh, the nanny who, who stayed, she was living with us at the time. She woke up one, one morning and was like, I had a dream that you gave birth on the floor and you were holding onto the bed and Antoine wasn't here. And I was like, okay. Um, because I also was having this feeling that I just, it wasn't going to go with that plan. Something that we always expect, you know, for us just to be doing the birth dance together. And, um, you know, I, I just took it in. I was like, okay, <laughs> interesting. Um, my midwife on um, Kauai, who helped me um, with the births of my two daughters in Hawaii, she also had a dream that Antoine wasn't gonna be there. Um, wow. Once my sensations were intensifying, I actually called um, my um, midwife, Aubrey, Aubrey Jones, she's amazing. I called her and um, yeah, she told me the dream as soon as I got on the phone. She's like, wow, I had this vision that he wasn't gonna be there. Oh, I'm getting chills. Wow, um, that is and insane. So, yeah, and so I call Antoine, I'm on the phone with him, you know, the whole time, obviously. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, going through all these emotions with them. You know, I'm like, I'm angry. I'm like excited that the, you know, the birth is happening. I'm like, where are you? Why aren't you here? You know, having those moments. And, you know, him on that end, just imagining the turmoil and the panic that he felt. You know, he was really good about being chill. But I know he was just like, oh, my gosh. Because he knows what I sound like when I'm going. I'm going. And this labor was fast Ellen it was quick it was so quick that I, I felt myself trying to hold her in you know trying to not go there because if he was there oh I would have gone quick quickly it would have just sneezed out like I anticipated you know <laughs> right and, <laughs> just, I know it's happening you know but I was I was definitely holding and waiting 
um, because his flight was early. There was the possibility that he could have gotten there to see the baby um, emerge and all of that, um, but I had to um, release that, and it was definitely, that was that work of that birth. And so I was having strong sensations in bed. I was holding on to Nakomi, my oldest son's hand, for, through most of a lot of the intense surges until I just could not stand being in the bed anymore. And I got up, was in the bathroom, I called um, Alice up, and I was like, I, you know, this is, this is it. And I told her to go to sleep, get some rest, and I was like, but if I call you, that means I need you to come, and I just need you to be with me. Um, so make sure your phone is on, because um, I was upstairs and she was downstairs. And so, so Alice is the, da up. is the Dada? Yes. Okay. Yes, Alice is the Dada, yep. And so she went back to sleep, and I was kind of just dancing through it myself again, just um, squeezing Nakomi's hand through surges. And it just got to a point where I just, like I said, I couldn't lay down. And so I called Alice. I kept calling her. I was panicking. I was like, okay, she can't, I can't walk. I can't go downstairs and get her. I need her to be here. And so I go to the top of the stairs, and I'm like, Alice, just, like, get up here. And so I went back in the bathroom, and I was even, I even really sad. I was like, maybe she's just going to sleep, and I'm just going to really do this myself. I was like, whatever, whatever. And so I have Aubrey on the phone, and she's, um, she's amazing at supporting me in birth because she's not, like, babying me or, like, oh, go get your oils or do this position. Or she's like, okay, you know what you need to do. Make sure you're breathing correctly. Um, you know, she just holds space, and that's what I need. Um, for me, someone doing that pacifying thing just really takes me out of what I need to get accomplished, you know. And so she tells me everything that I need to hear. And even I started crying at one point. I was just like, yes, what's not here? What is happening? And she was like, listen, you, he can't help you with anything anyways. You know, like, he can't do anything. This is you, you know. And, you know, I feel like she always says something to hurt my feelings a little bit during birth. And that would hurt my feelings. I was like, but it pushed me because it was like, okay, like, get out of your head. Just talk to the baby. Let's, like, dance and get this baby out. And, and it sounds so, like that's exactly what you needed to hear. Yes. And I, I totally it, had that, too, in my bur certain births where, like, my midwife would say something and I'm like, oh, that's yes. not what I wanted to hear. But <laughs> then later I'm like, the I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I had a time where I would ask my midwife, like, is it almost time? Like, is, this, is it almost over? It's taking forever. And she's like, you're one contraction closer to your birth. And I'm like, ah, oh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> <laughs> the truth yeah. hurts. And now a few words from our sponsor who helps make this show possible. We're brought to you today by Buffy. You guys, I'm telling you, every time a friend or guest lays down in these sheets and comforter, they are blown away by how soft and cozy it is. And I can say without a doubt that Buffy enhances my sleep. So in addition to that, what's so great about Buffy is that they are dedicated to making a positive impact on not only our sleep, but also the environment, using only renewable and recycled materials, which makes them as soft on the planet as they are on your bed. Their debut product, the Cloud Comforter, is covered in super soft eucalyptus fabric and filled with fluffy fiber made from 100% recycled bottles. This comforter has over 18,000 five-star reviews. It keeps you at the perfect temperature so you feel cozy without overheating, and it is by far my favorite comforter I've ever slept with. It's hypoallergenic and machine washable thanks to an innovative stitching batter that keeps its fluffy fill in place, plus its high thread count shuts out dust, mold, and mites for a healthier sleep environment. The best part for me, though, is that the average down comforter harms 12 geese, but Buffy's comforter is made cruelty-free. It feels even softer than down while keeping approximately 50 bottles out of landfills and oceans. So use my code Ellen for $20 off orders over $80. You can try a comforter in your own bed for free. If you don't love it, return it at no cost. And I feel like that's how we're taught to manage pain sometimes, you know, to kind of baby our way out of it or just, you know, find that nurturing when really we have the strength to heal and to move through these bodily sensations on our own. And um, it's definitely hard le lessons to learn when you're in the thick of it. Um, but like you said, it's, it's what we needed to push through. Um, and so, yeah, Alice was there really as my physical anchor because she was honestly, I feel speechless because she's Tanzanian. She's in this culture where, you know, you go to the hospital, 
yeah, she's aware that we can give birth. And I told her many weeks prior, like, hey, like, I'm doing this at home. You know, you, you're probably going to be here. So she was she was ready. She was in awe. And she was even researched herself because I told her we were going to do a lotus birth and all these new things to her. And so I think she was just really excited to see if I was going to carry this out, you know. And so she right. was just there physically. I was holding on to her as I would have done if Antoine was there. Um, you know, the difference with Antoine is he's obviously very soothing and he's very protective. So I feel very safe in that way. Um, but she really held space in the way that I would have held on to Antoine physically and, you know, just to <laughs> kind of beat up in there, you know, hold me up, get this for me, do this. And she just silently was there. And oh my God, it was amazing. It was the perfect balance that I needed to just be in the zone and do my thing. And so within a few short hours, you know, I'm on the phone, my last conversation I have with Antoine, and I think he really knew the baby was gonna come and he was not gonna be there, um, that there was a potential for it. Um, he was getting off the plane, catching a Boda Boda, which is a moto, motorcycle. So this guy, like, can you just imagine this guy who has a baby on the way? <laughs> with his locks flailing in the wind on a motorcycle and he's like get to my house immediately and he said that the guy he he really like like swerved through tanzania to get him here and totally. um man i'm like holding onto the back of the bed frame slipping and sliding on the bed we had like alice didn't really know how to set the bed up for a home birth because you know like you can put the the shower mat under the the bed fully made so you can just rip it off but she just put the shower mat on the bed and so like my water bursts and i'm like holding on to her we're covered in water okay wait pause the midwife. For a second. oh my god wait, wait pause pause for a second anyone anyone who's listening who's like what the heck is she talking about um either if you haven't had um a baby yet or maybe you haven't had a home birth yet a lot of times midwives will say let's put a shower curtain underneath your bed sheet to protect your mattress yes. but that way you get to be on top of your bed sheet <laughs> i'm like dying right now <laughs> that way you get to be on top of your bed sheet so um that you can be comfortable still but yes. dada put the sheet on top of the bed or to put yes. the curtain on top of the bed sheet <laughs> which is like the slippery shower the curtain slippery. Oh so my you're God. like sliding on the bed while you're in labor it was okay, sorry. crazy sorry and continue. i couldn't get my like grounding because i like to be like in a deep squat and i couldn't and so i feel like uh some kind of like nerve was being pinched with the pressure of the baby coming down in addition to me slipping and sliding so that part was very aggravating me aggravating for me during that part because if i just could have stomped my leg in a certain way then i could have just pushed her out way earlier probably um, but I kind of was doing that dance for a while. And then the midwife that we were um, in, in connection with just for paperwork stuff and just to, just to have, she showed up randomly and her perfume that she was wearing smelled terrible. Like this is when I'm slipping and sliding. Like I'm about to like, I think 30 minutes later she was born. And so she comes in and she like touches my back. You know, she's just, you know, you know, she's amazing. She's a wonderful person, but she needed to get away from me <laughs> at that point. And so she like touches my back and I like throw her hand off and I'm like, get out. <laughs> and she's like, oh, should we check the baby? Get out. <laughs> and so that happens. And um, Alice is on the phone with Antoine. He's almost there. He's on the phone with me. And um, at the end of birth, usually I'm a screamer. And so I, I, really use my voice during the whole birth process a lot of toning a lot of moaning um, this time I was way more um, aware of my breath um, and of the strength of my voice the other times I just wasn't um, diving into that practice but this time I was so I was mm. aware of that control that I could have um, with my breath and so towards the end you know it's you know you're just like, how much longer, guys? Anybody, can anybody help me or tell me when this is gonna be over? And so it was at that point, the pressure was coming. I don't experience the ring of fire necessarily, but I just feel like a full, full, full body intensity that's just like, ah, just like, you know? Um, and usually at this point, I'm holding on, bearing down, right? <clears throat> Antoine 
is usually his neck is about to break <laughs> at this point. Um, I birthed my two daughters the same way, just kind of holding onto his neck and bearing down. And so I was trying to mimic that, but that wasn't ha happening. And so I was just like in this like open squat with like my leg open and kind of just like up. And so there was room for the baby to plop out. And um, I started screaming, <laughs> just like, ah! And what it was doing was taking me out of my body and into my head again. And so Aubrey always got the right thing to say. Um, she said, stop screaming. Oh, Why don't you just my... stop screaming and just be quiet? Something mm. around there. I don't know if that was the exact words, but it had that that feeling. Just like, wow. let's try something else. Because she also knows that that's what I usually do at the end. She said, the baby's mm -hmm. coming at any second, Jordan. <laughs> Relax. You know, and, yes. you know, at this point, I'm like in primal. You know, I'm covered in oh my gosh. sweat and nervousness and excitement, fear, all of it, you know, that you experience at the end. And yeah. she says this to me, <laughs> to be quiet. And I'm just like, let's try, you know, why not? And so I remember just taking that breath and I put my hand down, down towards my yoni and I just breathed and I could feel the communication that I was having with her. Let's go, are you ready? I'm, I'm waiting to assist you. I'm here as your assistant. This is also your story. And I was able to connect with her in silence and I breathed her out. And it was the most peaceful transition of change in my life that I've ever experienced. I feel like oftentimes change for me happens and I have to make like a big fuss about it or it has to be like this dramatic pull of energy like I don't want to change you know and this birth really changed that for me just the power of being quiet silence and breath and she came out and it was so quiet that it kind of alerted my dada she was like that was the first time that she panicked the first time that she was like, she was like, she's supposed to be crying. She's supposed to be crying. Actually, we didn't know if she was a she or he at that point, but she was like, the baby's supposed to be crying. And she wasn't crying. She plopped out and I held her and she just kind of gave out this little squeak, like this little, hey, I'm here. Like, you know, and it was just so cute, covered in vernix. And I got to like, just like be in that space. At, I never was there also for the other birds because I was so exhausted from screaming, right? And just get out, get out. You know, just that, that release. I always had that kind of experience, but this time it was like inward, it was here. And I was able to, to hold that moment and I, I'll never ever forget that. And then the, of course the chaos happens. <laughs> Dada goes, Alice goes against the kids, they're downstairs. And also we were anticipating a boy um, Nakomi really just wanted a brother and we have two girls so you know we kind of were like oh maybe we'll have a boy you know more than we, we were like anticipating a girl obviously we we're yeah. so excited for either yes. but having yes. a girl was like I said the whole pregnancy if I have a girl I shall laugh because I think it would be so funny um, and so that's exactly what happened she came out I checked and I was like, oh my God, like, it's a girl. Like, this is so hilarious. This is this birth story is so funny. It's so funny. And so the kids come running up uh, and Nakomi immediately is like, I'm, I'm like, it's a sister, it's a little sister. Immediately I tell him and Nakomi's downstairs watching TV and he was like, it's a girl. And he goes back downstairs. <laughs> he was very disappointed. <laughs> he loves her now. He came back up eventually, but I think he was just kind of like, he was kind of with me through the whole birth. This is his... His, also his third birth, you know, so he's like, all right, another sister. <laughs> so he goes back down and we're just loving up on her and Antoine comes in 20 minutes later, 20 minutes after she emerged. Oh Isn't that crazy? Oh my gosh, that like is a he crazy story. He literally just missed it. And so also just we know that it. that's also the way the baby wanted to be born. For whatever reason, I needed to have that experience. Um, and I wasn't alone, you know, he was there. He was definitely there. And he just walked in and we just both were just like. Laughing, I'm sure. Just laughing, you know, it was just like so lighthearted. You know, there's no need to be like, 
you, you know, like whatever, no. you know, the baby is here. We have been waiting for this baby. And so you take off your shirt, jumps in the shower and then just goes. And so the rest is history. And here we are. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is an amazing so birth story. It's hilarious for one. And I love, I love when you're talking about how this birth, you really, once the, um, you were told, like kind of brought to your attention, like, hey, center yourself, even just yeah. stop screaming. That's astounding yes. to me. I've never heard anyone just like tell a birthing mother, stop screaming. Like, I feel like Honestly. I'd be like, what the heck are you trying to tell me to stop screaming? I know. I she love said it in a you... way that was empowering, though. So I think that's what right. the difference with her voice. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Right. The way you say it. And you, you took that in an empowering way and were able to center yes. yourself and then just be really present with your body and your mind and your heart. Like, Because I really felt like that with my fourth birth as well. I felt so mm. in control and in pow- not like in control of everything, but more just like yeah. in control of my mind and my presence and with the other ones I was more likely to just be like outer body experience it's happening to me with the while I'm giving like the baby is like ascending and like coming out but with this fourth one it was more like I have the power to decide how I'm going to use my voice with this one and I didn't feel that way with the other ones isn't that interesting it is magic of four something Something about that. I think it's like just like you said, you know, I've done this before. There's not fear involved. I know that my body can do this. I was made for this and I feel just empowered. And so I I definitely see similarities there. I haven't had an experience like yours with all those hilarious circumstances. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it's amazing and so, so special. And my eldest is the same way. Like he's seen, not the same way in his reactions to to birth, but like he's seen all of his siblings be born, and it's like yeah. just so cool. Yeah. And like I tell him, yes. I'm like, you know, there's a lot of adults who have never even seen one baby be born, and you've seen three babies I know. be born. Oh yeah, yeah, that's so. Sp- and to be the 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 men that they'll be growing into to have had these experiences. Wow. I totally agree. I think about that often. I'm like. As they grow older and, um, like, interact with women in their lives, like, how empowering that is for them, the way that they'll be able to look at women and know what they can do. And obviously yes. that doesn't mean that's, like, what only thing we do, just to clarify. But just, But it's like, important. It's an, an important thing that our body does. And just, like, just being very, like, in awe of what we, what we do, what we can do, you know? Yeah. It's it, it, we're definitely creating a new kind of man. They're, it's mm. they're different, you know. Right, and they're how having, to support? It's like learning how to yeah. support women through like the incredible. It's like basically mystical and magical when you really think about it. Like to just be able to see, like, look, here's what you can do. I'm here to support you and be there for you. And I'm picturing your partner just like in this frenzy, trying to get home to his wife. I can't even imagine oh like God. being like. Like you're, he's like this man that's like, I gotta get home to my woman and to my children. Like she's having, birth, she's having a baby, our baby, and I'm not yes. there. I'm like that. That is like, I, Andrew would be the same way. <laughs> I can only oh imagine. My God. We gotta get, we gotta get Antoine to do his his version, cause you know, <laughs> I, I'm just I'm sure he hasn't really dived into all of the intricacies that happen, cause that that is also a wild story. Just to totally. Yeah, even I'm sure he felt bad, you know, and the, the guilt. And we definitely dived into it many weeks. That was our journey together to just, you know, that was an experience you had, you know, alongside of me giving birth. Like, wow, you know, um, that definitely opened up new gates for our relationship as well. And, you know, and, you know, with each birth, he definitely has a new respect for me. But I think this one, he really was just like, wow, I'm proud of you. Like, you really did that. Like, you really, you really, you did it the first three times. But you were like, wow, you know. So I definitely yeah. felt like just beaming in, in pride and happiness that, um, you know, he saw me in that light as well. Because, oh, yeah. No one wants to go into something alone, you know feeling a weird way and I definitely didn't feel that way I felt supported and held and it was amazing right and what a like fantastic moment when he opens the door and his wife has just given birth (laughs) to your baby (laughs) and is like 
wow like look what you just did wow. and it's like i feel yeah. like it's that's such a special moment like all you can do yeah. is just laugh and be like yes. just so <laughs> overwhelmed with joy like that baby's yeah that's so joy. so cool so how yes, did you I this agree. birth compare to your previous births what were some pivotal experiences in the births you've had before were all of your births home births did you have some hospital births yeah i'd love to hear that kind of comparison I think that the crazy funniness, it, it happened with all three of the other births as well. Just like, really? just the strangest things occurred that were just laughable, honestly. Um, now, of course, I think for then it was like more trauma involved, I feel like, that we had to heal from. Like, it's funny to us now, but back then it was like, well, that kind of sucked, <laughs> you know? Uh, but I think that expectation, that control, changes that dynamic also i think that we healed differently from this birth because of how we prepared for it um we didn't prepare in the same way with the others um with nakomi my first birth um <clears throat> it was a an attempted home birth <laughs> um we were just mis mismatched i would say with the midwife um there's a lot of stories with midwives who kind of freeze up when it gets to a certain point in labor, especially with um, first time mothers. And we had that experience, you know, hearing a lot of mothers who've had similar experiences, we know what it, we, we understand now. But during that time, it was very painful to have trusted someone for nine months and for them to completely flip because of um, the system and expectations and fear of what would happen. Um, instead of just holding space for us as a wise woman, which she totally could have done, um, but I understand now, 27 hours is a long time. It is completely normal for first birth, but it's a long time. And I think everyone was ex exhausted. Like I said, Antoine's one of 10. I think six of his siblings were there in addition to my parents, my brothers. Um, the midwife came, she brought another midwife that I never even met. I don't know why she did that. She was there. I think there was even another birth attendant there. It was a full house party. And, Ooh, and that, that you know, makes a lot of as sense. We know, yeah. Yes. It's not recommended to do that. No. <laughs> um, you know, I think you for anyone listening to who might be like, yeah. Yeah. For anyone who might be listening and is like, well, why not have a bunch of people there? And, you know, for some women, that might be okay in the case. But for a yeah, lot of. It might work. Like, I have one of my friends who recently in the last year gave birth and she told all of her friends to come over right as the baby was crowning and she had like 10 or maybe it was like five to 10 of her friends just like watching her give birth she just got wow. she just has that personality and yeah. she that like that specific birth experience was like really empowering for her and she really really enjoyed that um but for a lot of women especially i think a first time yeah a first time birth but really any birth like I I definitely don't want to have a crowd of people in my space when I'm giving birth I try to describe it as it's kind of like if you're going to the bathroom do you really want like five people standing in the doorway like watching yeah. you go to the bathroom is it you know it's out? a very it coming out? yeah it's a very <laughs> it's Get a out. very private primal experience and intimate experience and yes. with my first birth I remember my midwife telling me to go in my room and be alone with my partner and to be intimate and I'm like what are you talking about that is the last right. thing I want to do right now right. <laughs> I was so just like God is here <laughs> yeah <laughs> so not on the plane the same plane with that but then after I gave birth the second still felt definitely hard no but then the third time I did a lot of mind work and a lot of shifting which I have up on my YouTube channel talking about what I did to, to prepare for this third birth because I wanted to do it differently because my first two were very long like yours. My first birth was 26 hours. Second birth was like 24 hours. And I was, as much as I loved all my home births, I had all beautiful, safe home births. I look at the second one and I was very, like a little disappointed than myself. Like, why mm. wasn't it quicker? Most people, the second baby goes a lot quicker and it wasn't mm. for me. So then when I was pregnant with this one, I, the third one, I was like, I'm going to do it different. So I did this, a lot of mind shifting. And at that birth, I wanted to be alone and intimate with my partner. And it completely changed the yeah. game for yeah. our birth. But yeah. anyways, go back to what you were saying about your first birth. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, so it was a full it was a full on party, and so obviously, like I, you know, my stories get hilarious, like they get real crazy, um, and so it got to the end, twenty seven hours, I stopped talking, um, and so everyone freaked out. <laughs> Usually at a certain point in all my births, I do go mute, except for the toning or the screaming or whatever, but I don't say any more words, you know. I say things in my head, but nobody can hear me, you know, I just don't talk. And so I did that the first time. And of course, I don't even know that I do that, that that's something I do when I birth, you know, that I go silent. And so everyone freaked out, they put oxygen on me, um, freaking ants went out. Like it was, a, you know, like when the energy of fear begins, it spreads like wildfire and so there was fear in the whole house right and even I was also like well what is going on needless to say 30 minutes later I gave birth but it wasn't without all of this trauma and abuse from the medical system that I had to deal with um, they called the ambulance Antoine carried me down the stairs outside to the ambulance oh my god just even thinking of the story I get into the ambulance they won't let him sit in the back with me <clears throat> he has to sit up in the front. At 30 minutes, I'm giving birth, right? Um, the lady in the back, she's like, you need to calm down. You're not about to give birth. I've had a lot of kids. You have a long time to go. And so just completely rude to me. And I'm like, again, I'm, I'm mute. And so I'm like pulling on her shirt like I'm about to give birth. You know, I'm like, what is happening? You know, and she's just like not giving me anything. And so they drive slow. It's not like an emergency. I've never, ever seen an ambulance just drive like normal they stopped at every red light it was so strange you know and i'm apart from my partner so we pull up to the ambulance you know casually hello we're here it's an emergency <laughs> and i get out and they check me and i'm crowning <laughs> he's there and the lady who sat in the back with me her face just went white she was so embarrassed they rushed me oh into a gosh. room and again the room is filled with people it's freezing it's the lights are bright. It's just everything we were trying to avoid, right? By having a home birth. Antoine, he takes off his shirt and stuffs it into the air vent. It was so freezing. It was chaotic. And so I'm pushing, I'm screaming, nothing's happening. Um, the guy who's, who's, you know, there, the doctor, he's like totally over it. This is like probably his 99th birth of the day. And he's like, all right, this girl's going to take a long time. So I get a moment to kind of gather myself. I'm being challenged by this guy. I'm like, oh, oh, you think I'm not about to give birth? And then I scream and out he comes. And <laughs> so we had that experience for the first birth. And that really just put that fire in us. Like no matter what, we're never coming back here. I get into my room, there's a bag of candy. Where's my postpartum meal? Where is the care? You know, we were forced, they were tried to force an IV, all this stuff. And it just was like, so we got out of there as quick as we could. And so that was that first birth. Um, and, you know, in prior times, I would say that it was traumatic. But now it's just like, you know, it's my initiation. It's what I needed in order to have the consecutive births that I had. Um, and so the, the two girls, obviously, we left even the city, went to Hawaii. They were both home births um, with Aubrey. Um, very, like gentle and supported but again the stories just got crazy for for my second um we were um staying um at this house and i went into labor and my husband got up and told the landlady hey she's in labor and the landlady goes oh you guys need to move out you need to be out of here in the le next i think like nine or 24 hours it was like a weird number too she's like you have to get out um and we were like what we just told you we were in labor. Why Why do we need to leave? Um, come to find out her father actually died that morning, coincidentally, and she just was going through whatever. I don't know why she would kick us out. I don't think that was a good idea. But so we're like instantly homeless. I'm packing up. I'm like in early labor for that one. My doula, we call her. We're like, hey, can you do, I don't know what we're doing, but can you? And another lady picks up, not the doula. The doula has fallen down the stairs and has twisted her ankle or something crazy and so she can't come to the birth again someone we've been building with this whole time like having this expectation the story and my baby's like no everyone can get out of the way I don't want a birth here I don't want her here and so we go to this wonderful lady's house and I give birth there she opens her home um, to women who need to give birth and she opened her home to us I give birth and then I, we're homeless right 
we're homeless. So I go and we go and we actually live with Aubrey for a few months after I give birth. And so that's that story. And then that's the whole Kauai, Hawaii, living in a van life and building up our business and then just changing in that way. And then I, I have um, my third birth and that one was very like, I feel like that one went most to plan. That one was the most that like just was like chill. Like I gave birth, I was supported by my community on Hawaii, was brought oranges and fresh meals and it was amazing in that way. <clears throat> and um, maybe that one, that one didn't have too much funniness. Much, I think. No, that was yeah. that was chill. Yeah, that's that was, all I think the only. I, I guess the only thing that was different about that one is um, my second daughter. She was born on the eighth of January, and um, Meta was born on the seventh of January, within a few hours of her older sister's birthday. So they're wow. kind of like twins in some way as well, exactly two years apart. You know, so I guess her emergence that that was funny. Um, in that sense. And they both were exactly four hours long, the labor. Um, I think I did what you did for your third on my second. I went and had that intimate, quiet time with myself for my second, and that made the labor just quick. Yes. And, um, yeah, that's definitely something that I would recommend for anyone who's looking to have, a, you know, an empowering birth experience to only have the people at your birth who are going to support you in ways that you need. That's something that my first midwife had said, like to don't have anybody at your birth that's there for them. This isn't about yeah. them. This is about yeah. you. So yep. you don't need all these extra family there just because they feel like grabbing the popcorn and witnessing a birth. Like yes. someone should be at your birth if they're going to empower you and be impactful and helpful for your experience. And that was really helpful advice. So I've always only had like the people that I wanted at my birth and I think that was really helpful um because sometimes you hear these stories like kind of what you have with your first birth where there's just too many people there's just so much pressure and outside you know what they're thinking and it's like oh now there's fear and there's worry and that really does affect you internally so like having the people at your birth who believe in you who know you can do this who help empower you and are there in ways that is helpful for you is I think yes. really, really helpful. So mm -hmm. what do you think are some like practical things for people who are listening to this and are like, look, I'm looking to have maybe a different experience than they had in their past birth or maybe it's their first birth going into it. What is the most helpful like tools that you've learned to um, just have an empowering birth experience or a transformative birth experience? Um, I think that, <clears throat> you know, words have a lot of power you know, words are spells. We're constantly casting spells with how, how, how we identify and um, label things. And so I think a lot of the wor wording around birth is very, like, um, confusing, you know, like pain or um, contractions or even the idea of timing contractions, this expectation for things to go cookie cutter, um, to just change all of that to fit you. You know, for me, sensations feel good. You know, for another, you know, another word may feel more comforting, you know, waves, you know, I, there's, you know, many other things you can say instead of pain and contractions, because those things for me, pain and contractions, that makes me think of, you know, hospital births or what I've seen on TV. And that's not what I want to experience. Um, unfortunately, um, the power of words, you know, is, 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 is very, um, important you know and so just shifting that I think is important that's a tool that I really use this fourth time um, fear you know yeah it's just important to to rewrite the story you know instead of just planning it just rewrite it the story is you know birth happens <laughs> you know it's physiological it is something that we can just do you know so the story has been written for the way it's supposed to go so just like reword and dance with it just make it lighthearted. go into it you know I, I just like to laugh about things that are supposed to be serious not laugh at them but just laugh with them laugh at a new perspective and just be open-minded so um yeah prepare the way that you want to prepare you know have your room set up be cozy have your the things you like to smell and eat but just like you know like just don't rely on anything um outside of yourself and just like that's how you can maintain that um 
just rewrite your own story. So yeah, I think is. the totally the rewriting rewriting your story, rewriting what you believe birth is supposed to be and look like is like ties in together what you were saying with like all all the things that you've seen in your past growing up of what you what you were told birth is supposed to look like. I mean, movies to this day. I was just watching a show last night that was just showing the most ridiculous version of birth and it's like this is just this is just what they show and it's not to say that that never happens but this is the only story that is told over and over again on television and it's just what we're we're kind of like taught from a young age that like birth is supposed to be so painful and you're screaming the whole time and it's panic and it's yeah um and that's why the rewriting of your story and also the mind change is really helpful because I think a lot of times, too, you might be able because I did like hypno babies, hypno birthing when I was pregnant with my first. And I remember, so it was very much about like waves and changing the language and the words. And when I was in labor, I remember saying, This hypno birthing is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, This is doing nothing. <laughs> like, I was like, No, I feel everything. It's so painful, no matter how. <laughs> I used say the words. Right. It's doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember like it was just taking a long time. And but I remember telling my midwife, we thought because, you know, it's your first time and you feel like, oh, this is it. Like, I feel this baby's about to come. And then you call your midwife or you go to the hospital and they're like, yeah, you got a ways to go. And they don't even (laughs) have to check you. And I'm like, how could you know that? Like, it's happening. (laughs) And It's like you just know. I learned over time that they know because you go, you shift your mind, like like your persona shifts. You're in a place yes. in the beginning where you're oh. like feeling it, but you're present. Yep. You're looking at yes. people in the eye. You can talk, yep. and then you get to a place where it's like you literally cannot look at anyone. Leave me alone. Like you can't. Yeah. That's why it's surprising when you stop talking it. that it's surprised yeah. that it made people afraid in your birth because it's very normal once you get to that yes. like transition phase where you have to. Yes, yes, you go to this like place where you literally cannot look anyone in the eye, and you're yep. so focused. Animalistic. And so, it's animalistic. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Yes, absolutely. But so I was. My midwife had come, and she's like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some coffee." And I was like, "What? Like the, the baby's coming?" And she's like, "You got a ways to go." So I was so disappointed in that. And then yeah. she, I called her back because I was like, "This is so hard." And she came back, and then. She was telling me to go be intimate. Like I said, this is my first birth. And when I was I was trying to be alone, I definitely don't want to be intimate with, with my partner, but I just went to go be in like closed dark room with him and just going through the waves and stuff. And the, the, the hypnobirthing lady was on the tape telling me to relax your birthing muscles and the <laughs> waves and, you know, and I was like, ugh, like I was like, this Quiet. is doing nothing. And then ugh. my midwife came in and she's like, Ellen, Ellen. She, like, snapped me, like, to got me to, like, focus because I'm just so, like, oh, this is terrible. Ugh. Just so outer body, like, yes. not yep. not centered, heart centered. And yeah. she's, like, relax. And she's, yes. like, listen to the lady on the tape. And I really didn't want to. But she's, like, <laughs> relax those birthing muscles right there. And she, like, pointed right here because I was trying to relax my arms. I was trying yeah. to relax my face. And, like, that's all good, too. But I was tight here. And when you tight, you're holding in and you're preventing – we're preventing that flow and that progression and it was when she really snapped me out of it kind of like with your fourth birth when you were told stop screaming in a very empowering way she was like that with me she was very like Mm. listen you got this like slow down relax right there and she's like or you're never gonna progress like it's not gonna not saying the baby never come but she's like this is not gonna go the way you want it if you don't relax right there and so then I gave birth like within an hour after that it was crazy how it was just like it's a very yeah, and so that's why sometimes the words are helpful, but if your subconscious really believes that birth is painful and long and hard and horrible, no matter if you're saying the words waves or, you know, positive language, sometimes it's so deep that you really have to go and like heal your inner wounds and your inner traumas around what you think birth is supposed to look like. And that's why I did with my third and what it sounds like you did with your second. And it really, it really transforms it. Yep. And just looking at birth is like, it's, it's hard work. It's like a physical act. Like it's physical. That doesn't mean you need to prepare with yoga or, or working out, but it, it's something you have to work with your body. 
because mm -hmm. it's, it's something that is moving. A human is moving down. Like it's not, yes. you know, I think that we, we hear it, but we don't really believe it, you know? Yeah. With that yeah. first birth, we're like, uh, it's just supposed to happen. Birth is just supposed yeah. to happen, but it's like, but what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you think was gonna happen? <laughs> the baby's up, it's gotta come down and out, you know? Yeah. Um, and so welcoming, like, yes, this is the point. This is the point of this, you know? You know, it's like you, you're saying, you know, using the bathroom, like you're not gonna be using the bathroom and hold it in and then be upset because it's not coming out. It doesn't make any sense. Release, relax, it's supposed to come out. Let it. Absolutely. And something else that I think is really, really helpful, just in accordance with what you're just saying, is going towards the places that you're afraid to go, that you don't want to go. Because like you said, it's not just happening to you. You're, you're doing it. It's easy to be like, oh, I'm just this passenger and this is just happening to me. And no, like you, you are a part of this and you are doing this. And so once I realized that and realized through each birth, I learned more and more how much it's not just about relaxing, you know, through the whole thing or relax the muscles, find the comfortable place, because that was kind of what I was told, even in all the birthing books that I read. I really didn't see anyone talking about the importance of going to the places that are the most uncomfortable yes. and relaxing there. Because yes. like I didn't learn that until the third and fourth birth yeah. where I was like, oh, I need to go there in order to progress. So the yes. first ones I was trying to hide from it. I would try to run yes. away from it. As soon as run. I felt yep. discomfort and pain, I would just go and get to the nope, most nope. comfortable position I could get yeah. in so that I didn't yeah. feel it. But mm -hmm. that would slow the progression yep. down. That would make everything kind of slow down. It was when I got to those places where baby was like, ooh, I can come down this way. This is, yes. this is a position yes. that I can come yep. down. I that like you feel one. it the most, but yep. that's where you have to relax is right yes. there where you don't want to relax. The yep. places that are, you're so afraid to go to because you've never felt those sensations before. Yes, it's unfamiliar. So that, yep. did you feel the same Absolutely. way? Do you feel like it's like that as well for you? Absolutely. You have to run towards the fight. Like it's, mm -hmm. like it's hard work. Like I'm welcoming this. So I'm going to run towards you. I'm not going to dance around you, even though I have the tools to fight you and win, you know, like, no, I'm going to run towards you and I'm going to defeat you. You know, it's like that kind of mentality. Like, I'm not going to like, okay, this is intense. Like you said, that means it's, it's okay. It's a green light. The baby's like, all right, let me go. Like, it's like the babies yeah. are there like, you know, yeah. the, whatever it gets a, a good point and then he's trying to shoot through and then you're like, no, I need to relax. Yeah. And the baby's like, okay, you know, and that's when, yeah. you know, you know, it gets delays or, you know, it's all this. And then it takes you out of it too. I feel like, um, it takes you out of that primalness cause you get primal and you're like, hold on, hold on. And then you come out of it. Oh, I need to relax. And that's why I never enjoy for people to be around me who want me to relax. And I want people around me who are going to be like, Hey, let's, let's, let's go. Let's get this done. Um, because it's easy, because it is hard work. It's tiring. It's exhausting. So when someone gives you a, a hand, they're like, "Come on, just relax over here a little bit." Of course, you're gonna be like, "Thank you," you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not what you need. Right, and that's not to say yeah. there is never a time and a place for like relaxing if you've been going through a yeah. lot of hard work. But a lot of times, we're just kind of told the like, just retreat, relax that that relaxing your body without the realization that like you literally those positions where you feel it the most, that's where you want to be. And that's where you need to relax the most. And that's where it's the hardest to relax. And that's yes. where it's the most transcendent. Like it's like, mm -hmm. it's so transformative. And when I've seen like multiple friends of mine give birth now, and when you see them go to those places where they're doing it, it's like this otherworldly but so empowering thing. I just it gives oh me goosebumps. Gosh. I can't wait to be at a birth. That's definitely something I can't wait for. Outside oh, of yeah. <laughs> totally. I see myself like after the kids are all grown, I'm like, maybe me and my best friends will just become midwives and doulas so we can keep experiencing birth. <laughs> it's so it's special. Just, it is so special. It's, 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 it's magic. That's it's. Uh, I know it's beautiful. I also find it really helpful to um, visualize like sexiness. Do you feel like that's something in regards to that? We were talking about intimacy and stuff like that, but really the visualization of like plump, 
juicy softness because because your mind is so powerful it connect it's totally connected to you and your body down there so like all of that was stuff I definitely didn't do the first two times the first two mm. times was much more the subconscious was very like fear-based and you know clenching tightening resisting mm -hmm. and then once you're like enveloping yourself open and stuff like that I feel like that that is very very helpful to me yeah, definitely. My experience in the ocean um, the day before was like, I, I, I describe it as like ecstasy. Like it was like erotic for me. Like just feeling everything I was feeling was like things are going to happen soon and they're happening now. And like I can understand why people would think it would be painful. And I also can understand why people use the water. Oh my gosh. Because I, I never like using water in birth. Um, Still don't. I've never used it in birth. But for those early sensations, oh my God, it was so wonderful. I was just mm. like, oh, well, I'll just stay here. It was just wonderful. <laughs> and it wasn't even about like, I don't know, intimacy, but just like feeling in love with the way my body was um, communicating with me. Like I just loved being communicated to so intensely and to have the ocean just hold me. Um, so yeah, I definitely, I never understood how a birth could be ecstatic. You know, I was like, okay, let's, why are you tapping into that during, but it's, it's very, that's how the baby got here. Also, everything is, it's very, it's very similar in many ways. Um, being into totally. giving birth. Yeah. Whenever I talk about my favorite birth book called Orgasmic Birth, people are like, what? Orgasmic what? What are you talking about? What, what? <laughs> why are those two words together? <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's really I, helpful for people who are who are listening and, and being able to hear stories like this that are like really beautiful and empowering and soft and just just ecstatic, like you said. And that's that's not to say, though, that those uh, the other stories are not beautiful and important. They they are. They absolutely all are. And so for anyone who's everyone. listening that maybe has had some trauma in past births and previous births do you have any advice for women like you yourself having an experience that like you said you started to talk about it and you felt these feelings just come up from the way you were treated your first birth what advice do you have for women who are listening who have maybe gone through a harder birth experience and they're looking for you know a, a redemptive second third or whatever number birth that is for them yeah, I would just say, just just know that you're you're a part of the change that's happening. You're part of the rebirth. So it, it's painful for all of us to even have traumatic experiences at all in preparation for our daughters to never experience this. So um, I would just say to just have courage and just know that whatever story is laid out for you is, is what these next star seeds need in order for them to just, I mean... <laughs> For the husbands and wives of these next generations, you know, these couples, these people who are going to be procreating, like, wow, what, what grace they get to enter into this with, you know, we're definitely at the tail end of this after a couple births, able to have this grace and this, this understanding, but they get to have that at the beginning from birth, right? They get to mm. be in this safe space. And so just to know that you're a part of that, unfortunately, sometimes trauma and hard times and you know bad experiences and pain are essential for a certain lesson to take place and I'm grateful for all of the trauma that I experienced I can say it smiling now you know it sucked back then but wow what a woman I am today because of it and so you also will become the woman of your dreams by pushing through and understanding that you're an important part to this whole thing and um, all the mothers who have ever birthed are truly with you it's not just a saying for spirituality or for to be cute like they really are and that's part of the magic of birth you get to feel that with that intensity of the child emerging like wow every woman on earth can do this and you know those who chose to do this did this and I'm here because of this you get to have all of that in that moment it's just you get to be in awe and just know you're going to have that experience no matter what happens, that awe moment. It's, it's super special. And, um, yeah, we're also special and a part of this big unfolding. And I'm so excited for our daughters and our sons also, including everybody. I love that. 
I love the way you said that because it's so true. We are all part of this collective and the experience of birth. And I think it's so empowering and helpful to just realize and to be told from other women too that like you are a goddess you can do this I know it sounds a little bit cheesy maybe but it is really helpful like you can influence your birth and it's empowering to know that like your story matters and it's all beautiful and it's all it's all impactful to the greater story yeah and all the choices that we make about birth is just as fine-tuning you know for our future generations you know so the way that you choose to birth it's like you know, that's just you fine-tuning for your for your legacy, how you choose to birth. Whether you go in the hospital, whether you're at home, whether you do it freely in the ocean with dolphins, you know, that's also important because um, we're all unlearning. We all have certain spaces and we grow up differently. Like, we all have, we all live similar but very different lives, you know, so that's important to consider as well. Oh, I so agree. I think you should, everyone should give birth where they feel the safest, whether that's at a yes. hospital or at a home or yep. a birth center, wherever you feel the safest is where you should give birth. And you don't need to compare or look at other women and judge yourself. If you're not doing it the way that someone else is doing it, if that's where you feel safest, like tap in, tune into your heart and just go where you need to be, you know, and that, and that's everyone's story is going to be different. And that's all beautiful too. And that sets you up to be able to welcome stories that aren't going to plan, right? Because when you just are there, anything can happen, right? It's just like animals do. Like giraffes, like they're going to birth where they're going to birth. You know, they're going to make sure that they feel safe, but they're going to give birth, you know? Um, that's important to consider as well because the stories get flip flopped and all up and down and you just got to be present to just give birth, like in the car even, you know? All, um, and all mothers who give birth in the car are like rushing to wherever they're supposed to give birth, right? And the baby's like, nope, now. <laughs> There's so many funny aspects to birth and birth stories. And I really appreciate you sharing all this and sharing your story, your stories. Basically, we got a little little bit of all of them. And I just appreciate you being here. And I feel like it was so much fun to have this conversation. And like we could go on and on, but it's yeah, thank you so much for sharing. It's such a vulnerable thing to share, and I'm really happy for you. You guys, she just gave birth seven weeks ago. That's crazy. <laughs> Fourth baby. Amazing. I'm truly outnumbered and, and truly grateful that you've invited me into the space. I feel so held to just share my story. It's always very healing, you know, very close to giving birth to just talk about the birth. And so totally. thank you for sharing this special moment and... Hello to all of the people that you that you touch as well. I'm so happy to just be a part of this. Like, I'm just, I'm so grateful. Thank you. So where can people find you after listening to this? Yeah, so I am on Instagram solely right now. I was on YouTube, but channel got deleted. And so just being present with that change, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm on Instagram as Phoenix Wild. And um, I, I spell it differently, so P-H-E-O-N-I-X dot wild. And yeah, that's where I am. Perfect. A lot of amazing things in the works, so definitely love to connect with everybody. What do you have in the works? What's going on? Yeah, so I have um, a homeschool course, just starting homeschooling. I want to just support families. It's a lot of people who are homeschooling out of the blue and want to just do it naturally and simply. And so I'm creating a course to support that. That's great. And yeah, I'm really excited about just sharing my journey about homeschooling and to just provide an additional resource out there for people who are attracted to the way that we homeschool. And so that will be coming out very soon. And yeah, a couple of other things, a, a book. Um, we're working on some organic baby products, um, just a resource, a marketplace for people to just go get high quality baby products. I also get a lot of questions, I'm sure you do, about what to put on your baby. Like, what do you use? What's, you know, what's organic really mean when, you know, amongst all of these other brands who are lying to us, you know, we've all been, I won't name any brands, but the ones that are green aren't always green. <laughs> so true. <laughs> We're also creating a marketplace for that for mothers um, to be able to tap into that. So a lot of amazing things happening. Perfect. Well, go follow her at phoenix.wild and I will put the link below in the show notes and the description boxes if you're watching on YouTube so you can just keep up to date with what's going on with her and what she has coming in store. So 
Thank you so much, Jordan. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ellen. It's been an <laughs> honor. Thank you so much. Of course. Okay. Bye, everyone.